welcome to another video by my channel in this video we will discuss pathology of uveitis inflammation of uvea fundamentally has the same characteristics as any other tissues of the body that is vascular and a cellular response but due to extreme vascularity and looseness of the uveal tissue the inflammatory responses are exaggerated inflammatory responses are exaggerated and produce the special results which we will discuss here pathologically inflammations of the uveal tract may be divided into suppurative or purulent and non suppurative or non purulent varieties what has further classified name of the scientist has further classified non suppurative uveitis into a non granulomatous and granulomatous types although morphologic description is still of some value the rigid division of uveitis by wood into these two categories has been questioned on both clinical and pathological grounds certain transitional forms of uveitis have also been recognized some of these forms are phacoanaphylactic endophthalmitis and sympathetic ophthalmia they show they are showing pathological features of granulomatous uveitis are caused by hypersensitivity reactions while uveitis due to tissue invasion by leptospira presents the manifestation of non granulomatous uveitis what is sympathetic ophthalmia we will discuss it in detail nonflex the classification is often useful in getting oriented towards the subject of uveitis its work up and therapy therefore it is worthwhile to describe the pathological features of these overlapping both clinically and pathologically conditions as distinct varieties first we will discuss pathology of suppurative uveitis purulent inflammation of the uvea is usually a part of endophthalmitis or panophthalmitis endophthalmitis inflammation of the components of the eyeball and panophthalmitis whole eyeball occurring as a result of exogenous infection by pyogenic organisms these are staphylococci streptococci pseudomonas pneumococcus or gonococcus the pathological reaction is characterized by an outpouring of purulent exudate and infiltration by poly polymorphonuclear cells of uveal tissue anterior chamber posterior chamber and vitreous cavity so these are infiltrated by polymorphonuclear cells as a result the whole uveal tissue is thickened and necrotic and the cavities i of i become filled with pus now we will discuss pathology of non granulomatous uveitis non granulomatous uveitis may be an acute or chronic exudative inflammation of the uveal tissue mainly iris and ciliary body and usually occurring due to either to a physical and toxic insult to the tissue or a result of different hypersensitivity reactions the pathological alterations of the non granulomatous reaction consists of marked dilatation and increased permeability of vessels breakdown of blood aqueous barrier with a with an outpouring of fibrinous exudate and infiltration by lymphocytes plasma cells large macrophages of the uveal tissue anterior chamber posterior chamber and vitreous cavity so these cells infiltrate uveal tissue anterior chamber posterior chamber and vitreous cavity inflammation is usually diffuse as a result of these pathological reactions the iris becomes waterlogged edematous muddy with blurring of crypts and furrows as a consequence its mobility is reduced pupil becomes small in size due to sphincter irritation and engorgement of radial vessels of iris so because pupil becomes small in size because sphincter irritation occurs and engorgement of radial vessels of iris occurs 
exudates and lymphocytes poured into the anterior chamber result in aqueous flare and deposition of fine capes that is keratic precipitates at the back of cornea due to the exudates in the posterior chamber the posterior surface of iris adheres to the anterior capsule of lens leading to posterior synechia formation so the posterior surface of the iris when adheres to the anterior capsule of the lens then it leads to the formation of posterior synechia in severe inflammation due to pouring of exudate from ciliary processes behind the lens and exudative membrane called cyclotic membrane may be formed cyclotic membrane is formed due to pouring of exudate from ciliary processes behind the lens after healing pinpoint areas of necrosis or atrophy are evident subsequent attacks lead to structural changes like atrophy gliosis and fibrosis which cause adhesions scarring and eventually destruction of eye pathology of granulomatous uveitis granulomatous uveitis is a chronic inflammation of proliferative nature which typically occurs in response to anything which acts as an irritant for an body whether it be a inorganic or organic material introduced from outside a hemorrhage or necrotic tissue within the eye or one of the certain specific organisms of non pyogenic and relatively non virulent character so this is the uh, these are the this is the etiology of granulomatous uveitis the common organisms which excite this type of inflammation are tuberculosis leprosy syphilis bacteria causing brucellosis leptirosis as well as most viral such as uh, as well as most viral and fungal mycotic and protozoal organisms and some worms can also lead to granulomatous uveitis so bacteria viruses fungi and protozoa and worms can all lead to granulomatous uveitis a typical granulomatous inflammation is also seen in sarcoidosis non caseating granulomatous inflammation is seen in case of sarcoidosis sympathetic ophthalmitis and walked koyanagi harada's disease what koyanagi harada's disease The pathological reaction in granulomatous uveitis is characterized by infil infiltration with lymphocytes, plasma cells, with mobilization and proliferation of large mononuclear cells, which eventually become epithelioid and giant cells and aggregate into nodules. So, epithelioid and giant cells are the characteristic of granulomatous inflammation. Iris nodules are usually formed near pupillary border. copies nodule or copes nodule similar nodular collection of the cells is deposited at the back of the cornea in the form of mutton fat keratic precipitates and aqueous flare is minimal so copes nodules are formed near pupillary border while while similar nodular collection of cells is deposited at the back of cornea in the form of mutton fat keratic precipitates and aqueous flare is normal uh, minimal necrosis is the adjacent structures necrosis in the adjacent structures lead to reparative process resulting in fibrosis and gliosis of the involved area so this is all about the pathology of uveitis